Howdy, howdy. You know, back in the day, junk food companies could get away with some crazy shenanigans. Like, we had way bigger problems than some food colorings making some kids hyper. Try junk food with lead in it. Or how about Kinder Surprise Contraband? The reasons for these foods being recalled or illegal varies, and I'd like to check them out with you today. So let's check out the 10 recalled or illegal junk foods. No big disclaimer today, let's just jump right in, shall we? And of course, starting with number 10, the Toxic Waste Nuclear Sludge Chew Bar. I guess the name should have given away to us that was toxic. But I don't think any of us thought this candy was actually toxic waste. To be more precise, this nuclear sludge bar was found to contain very high levels of lead. The FDA's absolute limit for candy containing lead is 0.1 parts per million. And toxic waste candy more than doubled this limit at 0.24. Oddly enough, it was a toxic waste's cherry flavoring that was filled with lead. Every single candy bar the company had ever made was recalled. That's right, even the one in your stomach was magically recalled. When questioned on the recall, the Food and Drug Administration had this to say. These high levels of lead could potentially cause health problems, particularly for infants, small children and pregnant women. We're on the case. Luckily, there were no reports of lead poisoning from the candy. And in modern medicine, lead poisoning is treatable by your doctor. But try especially hard to keep kids away from lead sources altogether. Nowadays, this nuclear sludge bar is a bit of a collector's icon. Articles report the nuclear sludge is no longer available for sale, but very occasionally you can still find it for sale online, such as this eBay listing. Last one, apparently. Not that I actually recommend buying and eating them. Please don't poison yourself. And what do we got for number nine? Trolley Roadkill. Yikes, how did they ever get away with this? Now, it may not be a big surprise to you, but not everyone in the world was a big fan of the name Trolley Roadkill. Kraft Foods released these back in 2005, and these fruit gummies were shaped like flattened, dead animals. They even had tire treads. What an attention to detail. I just can't imagine the mindset required to think this was a good idea. Maybe they thought this would be seen as edgy by the teenagers? Fun fact, I was a teenager when this candy was released, and I happened to be reading a book about roadkill at the time. Well, Toad's escaping roadkill anyway. Honestly, I have no excuse. I can't explain what was wrong with us all that year. Good book, though. Anyway, understandably, some animal activists were a bit upset by this candy. And a New Jersey animal activist group protested the candy. They created petitions, boycotts, and letter-writing campaigns on trolley. They believed this roadkill candy sent the wrong message to children. They thought it sent the message that it was okay to be cruel to animals. Which, I mean, I definitely get where they're coming from. Upon noticing these protests, Kraft immediately halted production of the roadkill candy. And a Kraft spokesman came out to make this announcement. We take comments from our consumers very seriously. In hindsight, we understand how this product could be misunderstood. I mean, it's roadkill candy. How are we meant to understand it? Personally, roadkill doesn't make me want to eat candy. It just makes me kind of sad. But unless we all start walking the 20 kilometer drive to work, I think it's just a very unfortunate part of modern society. Here in Australia, we love our native wildlife, so we try to put up fences to minimize it. But anyway, moving on. And on number eight of our junk food list, the Kinder Surprise. Now stay with me here. Have you ever heard of the Kinder Surprise black market? Yeah, up until recently, me neither. But apparently, I'm holding one of the most scary contrabands when crossing the Canadian border. How? Well, the Kinder Surprise is straight up banned in the USA and straight up illegal to import. But here in Australia, they're available everywhere. We even have our own Aussie variations called Yowies. It's similar to a Kinder Surprise, but based on an indigenous outback monster that eats people. It's kind of awesome. Anyway, how did the Kinder Surprise end up a hot item on the black market? Well, the FDA banned these chocolate eggs because they contain small parts for a toy inside. And the USA Federal Drug and Cosmetic Act prohibits products that contain a non-nutritive object, aka small toy parts that a child could choke on. But the eggs do come with warning labels advising parents to not give these to kids under three. But the FDA, like me, assume that kids aren't going to read the warning labels on chocolate eggs 
eggs. Since, well, it's chocolate. What kid's gonna say no to chocolate eggs? And personally, while I wouldn't necessarily ban it, I always assumed these garish white, red, and blue colors on these eggs were designed for kids under three. Are there really that many nine-year-olds obsessed with red and white balls with toys inside? <laughs> oh yeah, n n never mind. However, these Kinder Eggs are legal in Canada, Mexico, and Australia. So when crossing the Canadian border, the US had crackdowns on Kinder Egg smugglers and US customs, trying to sneak their contraband into the Kinder Surprise black market. For example, one dangerous Canadian resident was found to be carrying one whole Kinder Egg across the US border. So he was threatened with a $300 fine. Ha! Oh, good thing you caught him. But these dastardly criminals' crimes get even worse. For in 2012, US Customs found two Seattle men carrying six eggs in their car upon returning to the US from a trip to Canada. Needless to say, these two men were held for two and a half hours and interrogated for their nefarious, heinous crimes. One border guard even quoted the potential fine as $2,500 per egg. But if you are in the USA, don't fret. If for some reason you actually want to give your daughter, son, niece, or nephew one of these garish, ugly, awful eggs, well now USA has a legal method. As of 2017, the Kinder Joy egg is sold, which is a variant of the Kinder Surprise. But the toy and chocolate are finally separated in this version. I have no idea why it took them so long to work out a problem as simple as separating a toy from an egg, but whatever. Now even the USA can have the apparent great joy of finding this sad looking donkey in their chocolate. I'll, I'll never understand these stupid candies. Anyway, why don't we do a quick taste test? I remember eating these a lot as a kid and I never liked the taste of the chocolate. Let's see if I like it better now. Oh. Still tastes kind of milky, like white chocolate. It's not bad. It's actually a little better than I remember. So cool. Apparently it tastes better to adults. Mm. As you can see, it comes with this toy inside. So I don't know, you couldn't really bite into this thing. It seems too big to choke on. And inside we have toys that look just as terrible as before. Look at this sad thing. What is this, a little scuba man? Oh jeebus, these toys are even cheaper than the Happy Meal toys. How do they manage that? And for seven lucky seven, Lifesaver holes. In theory, lifesaver holes were a brilliant idea. The idea stemmed from the ever popular donut holes. These were the holes cut out of the donut, deep fried, and served as donut balls. And the lifesaver holes were the same idea. Little balls served from the holes they cut from the lifesaver candy. Interestingly, these were recalled for not one, but two choking hazards. Apparently, even the packaging itself was a choking hazard. Why? Well, some teenagers were known to chew on the flip top cap and reportedly gagging on it. Well, could they not chew on the flip top cap? It's funny though, because this whole thing is rather ironic for lifesavers. You see, the lifesaver's hole in the center was done to reduce the likelihood of choking. This has to do with Crane, the man who helped create the lifesaver. It's reported that, tragically, he lost the life of his son due to choking. So later, he had the idea to carve a hole in the hard candy. He did this so if the candy gets stuck in someone's throat, the hole keeps an open airway, thus preventing choking. And that, my friend, is why it's called a lifesaver. Isn't that neat? So after four choking incidents happened with lifesaver holes, the candy was recalled and the package was redesigned. But lifesaver holes had quietly disappeared from shelves by the end of the 90s. And while I'm personally not sure why, it does beg the question, what do they do with the discarded lifesaver holes now? Do they really just put them all in a dump truck? It just feels like a bit of a waste, you know? And coming in at number six, oh. The Hippie Sippy. Far out, man. You can probably guess why the FDA banned this one, but we'll have to go far back in time to discuss this one. Back when the USA first imported the Hippie Sippy from Japan in 1968. Because apparently in the 60s, the idea of sipping tiny chocolate balls through a straw seemed like a marketable idea. Everything about this candy makes me uncomfortable. The creepy, pasty white face eating them. That weird syringe-like needle shape to the candy. The clear choking hazard by drinking tiny solid shards of chocolate. What were they thinking? The whole thing just strikes me as a stupendously bad idea. I guess the sellers were trying to cash in on the hippie movement of the 60s. Because the candy came with metal pins with slogans such as, I'll try anything. 
But I mean, the pen seems redundant. If I saw someone drink down this candy, I'd half expect them to lick the pavement they walk on. So why would such a terrible, stupid candy get banned? Well, some parents and government officials were outraged by this candy, as they claim this candy promoted drug use. I guess a bit like those awful chalky candy cigarettes. It tastes like chalk that they put sugar in. Except the hippie sippy was shaped more like a drug needle. Ew. But a salesman for the hippie sippy attempted to defend them. He claimed they were just another innocent novelty item. When questioned, he said, What we have here is a plastic bottle with chocolate inside. I don't see how hippies can be taken to task for that. All in the minds of the people complaining. Oh, come on. Who are you kidding? It's literally named hippie sippy. You just can't weasel word your way out of this one. So the FDA did go on to ban this candy, but it actually wasn't because of the complaints. It was actually the same concern I had. Like I said, this thing is a choking hazard waiting to happen. And the FDA were most concerned with these small candy-coated chocolate balls being inhaled into the lungs. And yeah, I personally think I'd struggle not to cough when drinking down one of these things. Just as well, it was a weird, unappealing candy to begin with. Hopefully, no one choked because it didn't get too many sales. And coming in at number five, Reese's Bites. When you think a chocolatey peanut snack, you may tend to think Reese's. They're generally known as the classic when it comes to peanut butter candy. They're actually the most popular Halloween candy among kids in America. And Reese's Bites were no exception to their popularity. They were basically little peanut butter balls and absolutely loved by fans. But in 2007, they were suddenly discontinued. And many fans were outraged. One determined consumer even started a petition to bring back his favorite snack. Tanner, the creator of the petition, wrote, these were by far the best Reese's product, yet you discontinued them. I wish they still made these, but yet by doing so, you have told people their lives don't matter. And for those not born in time, you robbed them of the chance to try them. I, I don't know, man. When you say a candy company doesn't think your life matters because it stops making your favorite chocolate, I, I feel like that's getting a little hyperbolic. But Tanner was not alone in his beliefs. Many signed this petition and commented on it. For example, Ricky said, Have you seen the state of the world in the past 20 years or so? It's a mess. Only one thing could possibly bring back peace and normalcy. I think you know what I'm talking about. Bring back the bites and save the world! Oh, now I understand. So ending world hunger, stopping climate change, and seeing the Declaration of Human Rights upheld globally won't save the world. No, no, no. Reese's chocolate, that will save the world. Well, now I know. Again, guys, I think we're giving a little bit too much credit to this chocolate. Anyway, you're probably wondering why, if this candy was so loved that it was discontinued at all. Well, given the size of them, you could probably take a good guess. Yep, the candy was a choking hazard. And yeah, little candies like Skittles and M&Ms get away with this size. But Hershey's candies are notoriously smooth and silky, so the candy easily slid down the throat before some people could even chew it. The size of these Reese's Bites was also a concern, particularly for kids. Being larger than most candies of this shape, at this size, if it were to slide down a small child's throat without being chewed, it would be much more likely to choke them. So in 2007, Reese's Bites were discontinued for safety. And for number four, Green Apple Skittles. Way back in 2013, these Skittles were originally intended to replace the discontinued Lime Skittles. And personally, I way preferred Green Apple Skittles to Lime of a very small minority of people. Much of the internet was outraged at Apple Skittles. News articles seemed dumbfounded as to why the Lime Skittle was replaced at all. To quote Tiger News, No one truly knows why this decision was made. Um, I don't know. Maybe because no one ever bites directly into a lime? They're much more likely to bite into a delicious green apple? The bigger question to me was why Mars didn't replace Lime Skittles sooner. But apparently, many people hated the apple green skittle. And fans were committed to bringing Lime's citrusy explosion of sourness back to the market. Fans made petitions, social media posts, and they made certain that everyone knew just how much they hated the green apple skittle. And you know, if they really hated themselves, they could buy a bag of pure lime green skittles. Ew. 
In fact, Skittles were so aware of the backlash that they made an April Fool's post pretending to have made a pure green apple flavour. For eight long years, people complained about the loss of their favourite Skittle flavour in the world. Like, far too many Change.org petitions were made about this stupid candy flavour. But then the day came. In 2021, Skittles announced that Lime Green would permanently return to their bags. Yay. To quote this news article from Taste of Home, Now we can see how much Skittles love their fans. Mars has heeded our prayers and rewarded us all with what we want most. Lime Skittles, baby! I mean, I was personally hoping for global socialised medicine and my family's good health, but I guess some people really liked their lime green Skittles. Luckily, I don't personally eat Skittles, so I'm safe from my childhood nightmares return. Number 3. Space Dust. Do you remember Pop Rocks? They were these weird pieces of tiny ground up candy that kind of sizzled in your mouth. And with the popularity of Pop Rocks came the psychedelic creepster candy known as Space Dust. Space Dust was very fine, ground even finer than Pop Rocks. Some people claimed it was the leftovers from the production process of Pop Rocks. And this does match with what Bill, the creator of Pop Rocks, said in a 1979 newspaper clipping. So why was it taken off the market? Well, surely their advertising couldn't have helped. Look at this floating brainstem nightmare fuel that is the space dust creatures. Space dust sizzling candy in your mouth. It's out of this world. In the 70s, people were terrified of Linda Blair and the Exorcist, but lots of people can spider walk. Why weren't 70s kids scared of this thing? But anyway, the actual reason they were banned was because, at the time, there was a popular dangerous drug called Angel Dust. It was supposedly a hallucinogen that could also cause distorted hearing and violent behaviour. And people of the 70s apparently believed that space dust would encourage kids to start using actual drugs. I guess because of their similar texture and both having the word dust in the name. Mm, yes, makes sense. Good call, staff. I noticed one Twitter post even called it The Gateway Candy. Though it is Twitter, they might have just been being silly. They did try renaming Space Dust to Cosmic Candy, but this didn't help much. As rumours started spreading that a child had died while eating Cosmic Candy and drinking soda. And as you can probably guess, this is of course not true. If it was, it's very unlikely it was related to the Cosmic Candy. You see, for a while there was this weird rumour that Space Dust and Pop Rocks could make your stomach explode if you had it with soda, but Mythbusters debunked this years ago. So did Steve Spangler. Even with time for digestion, the Pop Rocks and Soda just don't produce enough gas. Even the chemist who created it debunked it. You see, the controversy ran so hot that our old buddy Bill, the inventor of Pop Rocks and Space Dust, took out a full page in the newspaper. Good old Bill wanted to defend these leftover Pop Rocks as perfectly safe. These are some of his comments in the Pittsburgh Press. Cosmic candy is just a candy. All its ingredients are approved as safe by the FDA. Cosmic candy is proof that big corporations can have fun. If you have any questions, feel free to write back to me. Huh, what a friendly, open fella. I like him. Kind of makes me want to open up my P.O. box again. Anyway, despite Bill's best efforts, rumours continued to surround space dust, and eventually it was completely discontinued. Number 2. Juice. If you've been here a while, you might remember me talking about Four Loco back in the controversial junk foods video. Oh my god, that's disgusting. Holy shit. <laughs> the drink was known as Blackout in a Can, and Juice had a similar reputation. Cheers to not dying. Oh Jesus, no. Juice was another example of a notorious caffeinated alcoholic beverage. And the powerful stimulant sedative effect this drink had was concerning to the FDA. With a mixture of caffeine, taurine, ginseng, and of course alcohol, juice not only got a person drunk, but the caffeine masked the effects of the alcohol, which allowed some people to drink and party even longer without feeling the need to stop. The drug and alcohol mixture ended up very potent and quite dangerous, with juice having concentrations of up to 14% alcohol and the caffeine on top of that. Many drinkers found themselves even more drunk than usual, and more likely to make bad decisions and have an outright blackout. So the FDA went on to place a complete ban on all alcoholic caffeinated drinks. So in 2010, the FDA sent juice a warning. 
Your drinks contain an unsafe food additive. Further action, including seizure of your products, may occur under federal law. These juice drinks were declared a public health concern. And given the amount of alcohol poisoning that was happening across the USA, it's no surprise. Anyway, when Juice got their warning letter from the FDA, they responded immediately. They reformulated their drink, minus the caffeine. But personally, eh, I don't drink myself, so I'd rather stick with peach iced tea. And finally at number one, Lucas Lemon? Lyman? Let's just go with Lyman. Lucas Lyman was a powdered candy created back in 1986 as a hobby for some brothers in Mexico. This candy imitated a spice, and it was even in a spice shaker shape package. Apparently it was really nice when sprinkled on fruits like mangoes, but kids treated it like candy so they were known to pour it right into their mouths. Some kids were even known to snort the powder. Oh dear, that's not the best habit I've known to be teaching kids. But snorting this stuff wasn't even the main issue. The biggest concern was that, much like nuclear waste candy, Lucas Lyman also had copious amounts of lead in it. Because I guess some people were just absolutely certain that lead doesn't belong in car batteries. No, 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 it belongs in children's candy. And this wasn't just trace amounts. This thing was stacking 12 milligrams of lead. Maybe they're trying to start nuclear bunkers in kids' stomachs or something. While this amount wasn't likely to kill anyone, the science is pretty clear that lead is really bad for the human body. Apparently this level of lead was often just found left over on the wrapper. But the FDA was certainly in no hurry to ban this thing. In fact, this stupid candy was made in 1986, yet it wasn't pulled from shelves till 2004. And when it was finally removed, it wasn't banned. No, no, it was a voluntary recall. They just took the lead-based candy off the market out of the goodness of their hearts. Apparently, this stupid lead candy was kept legal because it was classified as a spice. You know, despite kids snorting it, it was a spice. So eventually, this Lucas Lyman was only put on novelty store shelves. Later in 2007, in the USA, it was found that Lucas Lyman was still being sold in some candy shops. And lo and behold, it was still contaminated with toxic levels of lead. FDA, what are you doing? Surely children eating lead is something you want to look at within a 20 year time frame. Oh yeah, this is fine, this is a spice. Many health officials were very upset about Lucas Lyman. Health advocate Leticia criticized Mars for the voluntary recall. In a statement, she said, This is really damaging to the image of all other candy makers. Other makers are trying to do the right thing by lowering the levels of lead. Even the state public health officer was warning about the damages of lead poisoning. But Department of Health? Their hands were tied, they couldn't recall it. Why? Because there was a legal loophole of it being old stock. And apparently they just can't recall old inventory. Tony of Mars responded to the outrage. This must be old stock. They haven't sold this stuff since 2004. People shouldn't be selling it. No, it's almost like it should be illegal to sell lead-filled foods to children. So if you do happen to see Lucas Lyman on shelves, please don't buy lead candy. But I would like to mention as a footnote, the FDA is pretty damn good at monitoring the vast majority of food. You should see the amount of trials and research they do on the smallest ingredient. The vast majority of foods you're going to find in the grocery store, they're perfectly safe. I just recommend keep candy an occasional treat and have lots of fruit and vegetables. Anyway, if you have any suggestions for other food videos you'd like to see me do, feel free to let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching and hopefully I might see you next time. Today's member question is from Mewtwo Shadow FNAF Girl. They ask, if you were to get rid of one of these two things, what would they be? Would you get rid of NFTs or AI? I wouldn't get rid of AI. It can potentially be used for medical services and even to save lives and help cure cancer. Just because social media misuses, it doesn't mean we have to toss out the whole thing. I'd probably get rid of NFTs, as from my personal experience, they don't really seem to add anything to technology or society. They just seem like a get-rich-quick scheme disguised with a digital veneer and made successful only because so many people are trying to get rich off them. I've known people who've lost a lot of money from it, so it's just my personal experience. I'm tired of every human being having to turn into a little entrepreneur in their spare time. When a person has finished their workday, can't they just relax a bit? Why does your average person have to think about NFT prices now? Ugh. Just make sure to take some time to relax too, okay?